Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Hey guys, this is Ruroni K95 here. It is time for a redo type of review, which I wanted to do as a little re revisiting thing, so I can review something from the past of what are my favorites on here, from what I understand, is that today we're going to be doing a re-review on The Incredible Hulk Pilot. Yeah, this is the first time, I mean, you know, The Incredible Hulk Pilot stars Bill Bixby, Lou Ferrigno, Susan Sullivan, and Jack Colvin, especially from the first season. Although it was premiered on, and it's also based on the, the, the character of the same name by Marvel Comics, the Incredible Hulk premiered as a um, two-hour pilot movie on CBS on November 4th, 1977, which is during the 70s. Even though 1977 was the same year we had Saturday Night Fever and Star Wars, which are these two movies. The Incredible Hulk, on the other hand, has got the attention the most as well. For the thing about the Incredible Hulk pilot is that this was how it was also edited as a two-part episode version when it was started for the TV series. Even though this episode was directed by Kenneth Johnson, who's known for The Bionic Woman and The Six Million Dollar Man, especially if those who are watching TV in the seven, during the 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s, this is a lot how... And that's how the production get to how when we'll get to the production of the Incredible Hulk in just a moment though. So this we're gonna and also this was released outside of the U.S. as a theatrical movie in Italy during the 80s, especially for the Incredible Hulk pilot, which I think this was released as a movie outside of the U.S. when it was released in European countries and Australia in the continent as well. Especially, despise though we, oh, television used to air the two-part episode version of the pilot. We do get the full version of the Incredible Hulk pilot, which is also available on DVD though. So let's review the the this episode. We're going to be reviewing the Incredible Hulk. We opened up the story of how David Banner and the love of his life, Laura, of how he has a lot for the moments when they were driving in the car. And then the tire has popped, and then the car starts rolling down in the bottom of the hill, grass hillside part in the car crash scene. But then David Banner has to jump out of the car. It was only him, but Laura was, is still inside, especially. He tries to get her out of the flaming car when the car was upside down. David wokes up from his nightmares. He always knew that he has lost the love of his life, of what he has loved as well. Until he went to work, ooh, the Culver Institute, though, is basically how he met Dr. Elena Marks, though. If he, if she would have known, if he would have gone back to the shrink, though, especially if he's been having those nightmares from, the, from what he had known about this. And then they were review, interviewing those people, such as Mrs. Meyer and her son, especially how the, her story is similar to David's, except that she saved her son from the car, or which is burning, because including all these countless of other interviewees, because she knew that she has got the strength. But then David realized of how oh, he remembered of how something has got to him ever since Laura died as well, especially of how he would have know for this as well. And then he got a visit to Jack McGee if he wants to interview, though, especially, but he was not even focused on the interview for him because he knew if his, the newspaper was only for or, uh, all these types of subjects as well. David and Elena, on the other hand, is that they were figuring out of how they studied of how the strength of how the humans got, especially all the people that David and Elena Marks has interviewed as well. 
especially of how they want to search for the strength of how strong these people, what they had in the body as well, like the human as body as well, how something happened, goes. So it's like, why does it happening? What, how does the circumstance got to me? Like, how do these people got so strong? That's how David wants to know, especially how he would have had a lot to do for, especially of how he could figure out, though, until he wants to find all the, the those gamma ray DNAs as well, especially what they take a look at the the other interviewees DNA exams as well of how they studied of how they were gotten so strong as how they would have expectedly and then especially all of the same DNA radiation of how does it work though but then they were a lot more different than David but then Elena Marx told David what is the last time he had his DNA tested David realized he's got the DNA tested how does he think it's impossible? It might have been some sort of external operating of it might be some sort of ingredient missing. David was basically how he's studying all the other people's DNAs of how he studied well they're waiting for a microwave transported from Pittsburgh well to be you know to you and me as how David wants to realize is that he wanted to study the people's DNA of how they wanted to learn when the evening comes. He tries to call Elena Marks on the phone just to expect to see how low it was on him, but she's not answering the phone. So instead, he goes into uh, the laboratory because uh, he wants to overdose himself with 300,000 units of gamma rays as how he would know. Imagine, before he does that, he lifts a heavy piece of equipment, but then he turns on the, the gamma ray machines, including in how the x-rays on all uh, has got to him when he got overdosed himself. David lifts up the equipment once again, which is heavy. Something has got inside of him. Then he just left the laboratory for the night when the rain comes. And then he basically wants to start the car, but it wouldn't start but until it did, and then he drove off in the rain the other night when he was driving home. He was like, why did the radiation got to me? What are the circumstances? Why did these people gotten so strong of how do they lift up a half-ton car or bust door downs or anything what they got? Until that wasn't long until he had a flat tire. He wants to realize that he didn't know of how the debris in the road causes him to give him a flat tire, especially of how this happened in the Incredible Hulk pilot, as how it goes. He notices something, basically. He has to get the, the other tire from the back seat of the, the, the trunk of the car, including the tools, especially for... He wants to replace the, top, the flat tire with the, the other tire so he could drive home, but instead he ends up injuring himself in the process, which causes some something really happens to him of how his Hulk out transformation he becomes and then he transforms into the Hulk himself and then he just the Hulk just smashes the car throws out the tire into the ravine out of the car and he just like destroys the car including the windows and stuff and then he flips the car in the bottom of the ravine which is basically they filmed on the Lost Road set which is on the back lot at Universal. Morning comes. David, who is still the Hulk, the mean green car-destroying machine, he ends up into the woods where he sees a girl who is fishing by the lake, where the Hulk approaches the girl by the lake. And that scene, basically, you noticed. This is basically right out of Frankenstein, especially, which is a reference to the 1931 Frankenstein movie, directed by James Whale as well. The only difference is that Frankenstein just throws the girl in the lake, but the Hulk doesn't do that. The Hulk does scare her, though, but the way how he looks, with the, the dyed yak hair wig, those bushy eyebrows, the forehead, the nose piece as well. Because, you know, the Hulk is played by Lou Ferrigno in that part. 
you know, the Hulk does scare her, though, and that causes the girl to be to be frightened, and she flees into the canoe. Her father hears the commotion. She fall, tries to get away from the creature, but she falls into the water, and this means the Hulk had to save the girl from drowning because he wouldn't hurt anyone because despite how strong the creature is as well, he tries to grab a hold of the branch of a tree just to save the girl from drowning in the water. Unlike Frankenstein, both the book or James Whale's film as well, in particular. Now, this is the scene, especially where the Hulk tries to grab a hold of a tree to save the girl from drowning. The one-shot scene, Richard Keel was uncredited as the Hulk, only in the one-shot scene, but the rest was done with Lou Ferrigno, because they already done one-shot scene with Richard Keel, which we'll get to in the production later on as well. So, and the girl's dad starts shooting at the Hulk when the Hulk tries to save the girl from drowning, and then he jumps over the branch of the tree, because he noticed it was the bullet that causes the Hulk's arm to bleed, though. If you take notice on that, where you see the Hulk jumps over the branch of the tree, he was wearing green shoes at this point, as it looks like if he was barefoot earlier. Yeah, especially how the Hulk was wearing like those green shoes as well. The Hulk d busts the, the, the girl's father's gun apart, and then he throws the, the, her father in the lake, and he wrecks up the campsite until he can take off into finding a reflection of the water near the stream. And this is the part where he, the Hulk sees the reflections during the reformation where he reverts back to David Banner, especially how David Banner felt looked like he's incredibly strong. And then he came back to Elena Mark's place at, the, at this point he, about who shot him, because... She thought it would have been getting him to a hospital, but he cannot go to a hospital because they wanted to figure out about what causes the trigger of how the gamma rays affect David Banner as well. But he said he felt incredibly strong about he, what he remembers of the other night as well. And that wasn't long until Jack McGee came to for an interview, but he doesn't mention about the Hulk at this point. They wanted to know about how the research was doing, especially if they wanted an interview, but Elena Marks has to downplay the interview because they were not into the interview, especially the newspaper or the reputation. Jack McGee notices the Hulk, David Banner hiding in the, the root, in, in this corner area, but then that wasn't long until they, they went to the Southwest Laboratory as how they wanted to figure out of how... Oh, it's got the decompression chamber as well, because David glad, was feeling glad if this ever happens, if they were feeling safe, they were, and they wanted to figure out about how, they wanted to know about how he wanted to do something as how they wanted to expect. When she spoke to Ben at, at the radiology unit, she wanted to know what did David Banner overdose the gamma rays, and he says it was 300,000 as well. And then he told her, David ben Elena marks that last night it was an electrical storm, and then he wants to recreate an electrical storm from the other night, especially when he used the water pipes and some electricity parts as well in the pilot episode, how it progresses, as it, how it goes, but it doesn't seem as it goes. But then he just gets angry and angry of how he would have almost got, basically, to figure out if if things just don't go quite well as how it happens. And then she has the moments for David when he felt sorry for all the hassle, especially. But then he just wanted to rest as well. And then he basically has the same nightmare from the other night, uh, from the very beginning. She records in something what's happening in the, in the dictor her phone as well, especially for what's recorded on the EEG scam. David Banner woke up from his nightmare, he, his eyes turns white, and then he transforms into the creature until she not Elena Marks noticed something happening in the EEG scam. The Hulk starts punching through the six-inch thick glass, which almost caught Elena Marks in the eye. And she records something happening in the dictaphone, 
especially when the Hulk destroys everything in the decompression chamber as well, including the water pipes and the steam pipe and the gas pipe and all in the process as well, in the progress as well. She watches something how, how the creature's appearance, his arms are huge and the skin has greenish tinge. I mean, it's like a man but only bigger and just destroys the compression chamber and he rips out of it. Elena Marks has to calm the, the creature with the, the use of a blood sample as well until he transforms back to David. She notices that if something of how... She, if they could figure out how they wanted to know because they, she looks at the 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 rim, the rim indicator on the EEG as how it happened, figuring out. Because David Banner said he was angry and upset because of the he left the laboratory because of the rain, the storm, and the flat tire from the other night. Because she wanted to know something of how they wanted to figure out, especially on the how all these inter the the DNA and the gamma rays as well. All those people that they interviewed, especially until they got a visit by the police, because they found his car in the bottom of the ravine from the other night as well. But J David doesn't know anything about it. And then he thought uh, he had a friend who has taken it from the other from last night. Jack McGee has tagged along with the police with the plaster cast of a footprint, for, which is found near the car. Because Jack McGee has had to make a plaster cast of it when they when he has found those footprints of the creature but the the police had to downplay the footprint though because they don't want to start a panic as well and then the police had to tell David Banner he's got to basically have to 24 hours to have the the debris cleared heard before the highway patrol do it themselves and bill them for their trouble but then, meanwhile, Jack McGee has it, wanted to interview David and Elena Marks about how the the girl and her father, who are in the woods, has, uh, base, saw the creature, especially in the campsite, has how it happened from the other night as well. That they saw the creature, but they downplay the interview because they basically had a two brickle basili means they've grind a live batch of it in the lab, but then any time as how it comes, if then D Elena Marks told the creature, no, no, told David Banner actually is that, that the creature won't kill because it will not kill because David Banner will not kill because she says that the Hulk will not kill because he's not a killer because cause that's how you want to expect because they're going to tr figure out if they're trying the x-ray therapy as soon as Ben and the others leave the, l the other laboratory. If she's, They're going to figure out if th she wants to get David Banner to be normal again. And when D Jack McGee was hiding in some bushes, as soon as Jack, uh, uh, David and Elena left to the other, go off to the other lab, he wants to go into the other lab, but it, the door was locked. So he notices something, the damages of he knows bacteria could have made that damage. So he goes to figure out if he can go into the other laboratory because the door was locked. So David Banner wants to basically how if he the X-ray therapy can re revert him to if he trying to figure out to be normal, but especially how Elena Marks figured out, especially to the two hundred rads, if they, if he can be revert to normal, but it doesn't work. Meanwhile, Jack McGee is in the the other laboratory. He notices something. He's been poking around in the debris, but he notices the damage. The x-ray therapy didn't work on David, especially the x-ray treatment has never done anything on David, because it doesn't work on him. So they... So he and Elena were going to go back to the other laboratory to pick up where they left off. At this point, Jack McGee notices something that he found the the piece of a when he peeks around in the the chamber 
her as well. He picks up a six thick inch glass until he notices something when he founds what he's been looking for is the the imprint of a footprint. Just it looks just like the one he has a cast of. And just especially the plaster cast of a footprint as well. And just like the ones that were found on the site where the girl complained, the green monster has frightened her in the woods, which is on the campsite by the lake. But that wasn't long until he hears David and Elena came back to the other, the Southwest Laboratory with, with the, by the, by car though. He start, he hears it and he starts hiding in the storage cabinet full of chemicals as well until they were figuring out of how the accidental treatment, how, but that wasn't long until they found Jack Mickey hiding in the clot, in the storage clot vault, though, the plutonium storage vault one, especially of how, and then he knocked a, something, a bottle of something nasty looking on the floor, and then he tries to confront them about, he, Jack Mickey wants to know if to ask David and Elena about the Hulk that has been attacking people, especially if how the girl, especially of where, where the girl at the lake was frightened by the creature in the in the woods, especially. But David just throws him out, especially with the when he tells Dave, Jack McGee, don't get David angry because he wouldn't like him when he's angry. Especially the, where the fluid in the storage laboratory in the Incredible Hulk is how something with the chemicals which causes a a humongous explosion with Elena, which causes an explosion in the laboratory with Elena Marks still inside. David tries to figure out of how he can save Elena Marks from the burning laboratory, but there's no way if he could have done that because there's something happening when he tries to save her, but the fire was in the laboratory. He transforms into, into the Hulk and smashes his way into the building when he kicks the wall in the progress as well. He tosses a, a, a huge concrete beam, which is on Elena Marks. He tries to get, save Elena Marks from the laboratory when they get out of the laboratory. Jack McGee notices all this of how he witnesses, but he doesn't know if the Hulk is Banner but then the Hulk runs off, by passes by Jack McGee when he has Elena in the Hulk's arms. And that's how the whole laboratory facility explodes as soon as the Hulk runs off into the night with Elena Marks. When Jack McGee just watches the explosion as well. Meanwhile, on the Hulk's feet, he when he was something how distance away... Just to get away from the the burning laboratory building, he takes Elena Marks into the woods, lays her on the ground, which is the grass one from the other night, where the flat, where they found David Banner's destroyed car during the flat tire from the other night. It was she was not in a good way. Elena Marks told David, who is still the Hulk, if she loved him, she doesn't know if the Hulk could have understand her. But then she told David Banner, who is the Hulk, that she loved him for a very long time, for such a very long time, until which are her last words, and I always will, especially when, which are her last words anyway before she died in the Hulk's arms. The Hulk has panicked, and then he lets out an anguish scream of, of sorrow, howl of a roar which echoed across the land as in the entire forest especially which it looked like something if Paul W. S. Sanderson would have done for the character Goro in the film Mortal Kombat to the point out 18 years earlier in 1995 but and that's how when the Hulk roared especially that's how he, he could he just leaves the dead body of Elena Marks there, and that's how he walks away into the night, leaving Elena Marks in the woods, 
just before the cops come here, when they found Elena Marks in the woods, she was dead. That's why. The, the next day of all of this, that the whole world thinks that the, the, the creature has killed David and Elena Marks as well. Was what the cemetery comes, especially the funeral. Jack McGee prints the story, Incredible Hulk Kills Two. The two gravestones were in the cemetery for, let's say, set side by side. One for David and one for Elena as well. But that wasn't long until David has come quietly later on, as soon as they let, uh, the funeral was over as well. And then he said to Elena Marks quietly, he said, I love you, Elena, and I think you'll love me too, although you never said it. And then that's how he walk, starts walks off into the road, because especially he, he, they think the whole world that thinks that David died as well, because... He just walks things of a man who no longer existed. A fugitive, as it seems. So that's my story in The Incredible Hulk Pilot. I mean, the story was great. I mean, very creative, though. The production was very awesome, though. Especially for the work of Kenneth Johnson, though. Especially they used stock shots. Especially in the, flat, the, the lightning stock shots. They were used from the Paramount Library, as well as the... The Burning Laboratory, the, the stock shots they used are from the Bionic Woman episode, from the Doomsday episode as well. And also, the sets on the Southwest Laboratory, they filmed it at Rockwell Canyon Drive in Valencia, right where the College of the Canyons are. And also, the Culver Institute Laboratory, I think this was at, I believe, Cal Arts as well as when David overdosed himself with gamma rays as well, especially in the St. Joseph Medical Center, though. As well as the flat tire, I think this is where they filmed it, on the back lot at Universal, especially on the Hidden Roads. Because I love the production, though. The music was good. I mean, the the emotional music on, though, was the Lonely Man theme, which you hear at the end of the Incredible Hulk pilot as how it goes as well. Because it, it was the work of Joseph Harnell as well. Yeah, the music is good, though. I mean, very emotional, -like, but it has its moments as well. But it, there's also the Hulk out music sounds, which is sound with those vocal, eerie vocals as well. I mean, the characters are maybe that great. There's not that many to know, go through as well. But we all know who the characters are and what you expect in the story. In the story, as how, I mean, my favorite part in, from what I understand of how I referenced of how. To another movie, especially where the Hulk meets the girl by the lake. That was a reference to Frankenstein as well, because, you know, Frankenstein is directed by James Whale as well. And didn't you know, though, that, you know, they wanted to cast Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Hulk, but instead, Arnold Schwarzenegger was too busy on the work with Conan. So, because Arnold was short, Ferrigno's height was taller than Arnold, though. Because Lou Ferrigno got the role as the Hulk, especially for the three-hour makeup when they have, like, the the forehead, the nose piece, and the apply the grease paint, the, the makeup as well. As well as the body it took an hour and a half to put the make the green paint makeup on. Especially, and after you have the dyed yak-haired wig, the eyes, and the teeth, the, the contact lenses. Especially for David, especially for David Banner on the Hulk out, and Lou for a note, especially when he play, does the role as the Hulk, though, especially, though. They wanted to have the Hulk red, though, because Kenneth Johnson thinks, was he the envious Hulk, or is he the jealous Hulk? But Stan Lee says that they how they made the Hulk green, because the printer couldn't work for the original comic book, though, especially the limitations. So green is the perfect color for the Hulk, especially for the original comic book, especially for what Marvel had to, a lot to do, though. I mean, the enjoyment, I really love the pilot episode. My score for, if you haven't seen it, give it a watch, because it's, if you, if you have it on DVD, like, especially that I watched from the first season DVD set of The Incredible Hulk on here, from the looks as how it goes as well. And also, didn't you know that this was released outside of the U.S. as a movie, though? Because 
I think this was released in European countries, and also, as well as, it was released in Italy and Germany during the 80s, as well, because from the looks of it, and this was also as a two-part episode as well, but the music is different and altered, though, especially from how what Joseph Harnell has a lot to do for it when he composed the music for The Incredible Hulk, especially of how maybe I will review the TV series at one point as from the in the works as well, from what I understand, is that my score for The Incredible Hulk pilot, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. That's right, a 10 out of 10 for The Incredible Hulk pilot. And also, this was released on November 4th, 1977. Happy 44th anniversary to The Incredible Hulk pilot, though. So that's going to be it for my re-review, like a redo review on The Incredible Hulk pilot review for today, you guys. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's what I'm going to say for this one. Well, I have reviewed The Incredible Hulk pilot once back in 2018. This is the second time I'm going to do like a re-review, especially the, ever since I watched The Incredible Hulk pilot, especially from the first season DVD set of The Incredible Hulk I have here, because I've been listening to the commentary from Kenneth Johnson as well. Hope subscribe to content, my anime planet link in the description down below. You can share this video on your Twitter, Facebook. If you have Twitter and Facebook account and all social media, smack the like button if you enjoyed this video. Oh, be sure to feel free to leave in the comments in the comments section below. Be sure to subscribe about what do you think of the Incredible Hulk pilot in the comments section below. What are your thoughts on it? And let me know. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, RuronyK95. Feel free to join my channel, especially if you're new to my channel as a newcomer as well. Smack the notifications bell button. Be sure to get notified also as well. And that's all I have here, because this is the first time I've been reviewing The Incredible Hulk pilot once and twice. This is the first time I'm doing it like a re-review, like a redo on a review from the past in honor of its anniversary, though. This is RuronyK95 saying thank you for watching my video, and I'm glad you liked it. I hope you enjoy it. Hope to see you soon for the next video. Hope you have a great day. This is RuronyK95 signing off. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you soon for more videos.